Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney, and today is Thursday, April 21st. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. As a reminder, these stories that we're talking about today are the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio. We know that because these are the stories that you are clicking on, sharing, and reading from our website and from our app. And we start with an alarming story out of Pepper Pike. A rabbi has been arrested for allegedly trying to meet what he thought was a 15-year-old boy for sex. Rabbi Stephen Weiss of Benai Jeshurun Congregation is accused of sending sexually explicit messages to an undercover officer who he thought was a teenager. At 60 years old, he was taken into custody on Monday in Cuyahoga County, and the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office says that it's believed that he was sending these messages to what he thought was a 15-year-old boy. Authorities say that Weiss had made contact with the officer, who he thought was a teenager, over social media, eventually set a time and a place to meet with that person who he thought was only 15. And then when members of the Ohio Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force captured him at that location, they apparently found condoms and other instances that might be used for sexual encounters inside his car. He's now facing felony charges of attempted unlawful sexual conduct with a minor, importuning, and possession of criminal tools. He was released from custody after posting 10% of a $50,000 bond, so $5,000, but is now subject to GPS monitoring. That's according to court records. He had been at the congregation since 2001 and was also once president of the Greater Cleveland Board of Rabbis. Here's what the synagogue had to say to 3 News Wednesday morning. The congregation's leadership was shocked to learn of the April 18th arrest of senior rabbi Stephen Weiss. That came from the president of the congregation's board of trustees. That person said that they acted quickly to suspend him immediately as senior rabbi, and he's been ordered to stop engaging in any congressional duties and has been barred from the premises. And they have no other comment, they said, on the situation at this time. Of course, this is a developing story. As we have more information, we'll be sure to bring that information to you. Now, we're also learning about a Ohio Department of Transportation employee who was struck while working along Interstate 480 East in Brooklyn. This person was taken to the hospital on Wednesday with non-life-threatening injuries. Officials say he was struck while he was working inside of a truck as part of a pothole patching crew. And this happened along the I-480 East at Ridge Road. And this was just before midnight. Now, ODOT says they're checking to see if any traffic cameras captured the incident on video, but... They're asking people, please be careful. This is the seventh time a pothole patching crew has been struck this year, according to what they have told 3 News, and the 77th time an Ohio Department of Transportation worker, vehicle, or piece of equipment have been struck. We don't have any additional details right at this time, but if, we do become, uh, if they do become available to us, of course, we will share those here with you on the air and online. Now, since it is Thursday, we do have updated COVID-19 information in from the Ohio Department of Health. Saw a big jump of cases in the past week, or a reasonable, uh, a significant jump, at least 2,000 more cases this week than last week. The case number this week, 6,890 new cases. Last week, on April 14th, it was 4,808 new cases. The total number of people who have died related to COVID-19 is now at 38,000. 360. Right now, 423 people are in the hospital being treated for COVID-19, and 48 of those people are being treated in an ICU. Now, if you have Verizon as your cell phone provider and you had disruption in service yesterday, now we are learning why. Verizon is explaining why. They said there was a fiber issue in the core of the network, and that caused some people to have call failures. They said that the issue was identified and resolved by engineers and that most people impacted should have service as usual. But if you don't have service as usual, if you still have lingering issues, they're asking people to restart your device and that they do apologize for any inconvenience caused. Now, there were multiple outages report yesterday and there were outages reported by multiple carriers on downdetector.com, which is a site that tracks these reports. But here's the thing about that is oftentimes the case can be if someone with some carrier tries to call someone with a carrier that is having an issue, the person with the other carrier will report the issue. Get what I mean? 
For example, Verizon was having the issue yesterday. So let's say someone with T-Mobile tries to call someone on Verizon and that call doesn't go through. Well, that person with T-Mobile isn't really having an issue. It's the Verizon person that's having the issue, but the T-Mobile person might report a failure as well. So sometimes that can be a little bit misleading, and that's likely what happened yesterday when there was a spike of outages reported across multiple providers. That was around 3.15 in the afternoon yesterday. Now, here in Cleveland, if you're here, you know we've got, we've got great stuff here in Cleveland. We have access to a lot of important art and culture here in Cleveland. And so some of those places here around town decided to put a study together to see what kind of an impact did they make on the community here in Cuyahoga County. So they reached out to a research firm, Tourism Economics, and they found that they do have a significant economic impact in the Cleveland Arts and Entertainment Spaces. So the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Cleveland Orchestra, Playhouse Square, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame specifically combined generated $822 million for the Cuyahoga County economy. That was in 2019's fiscal year. That was the most recent year before the COVID-19 pandemic. And those locations supported almost 7,000 jobs and an associated labor income of about $261 million. So that's a lot of people and that's a lot of money for the area. And it's a lot of people being brought here to the Northeast Ohio area because of those draws. Almost 2.6 million people came to events from those four organizations in 2019, and half of those came from outside of Cuyahoga County. So lots of people coming in from other places to support the county. And those people spent about $317 million at both those places and other places in the area. That includes restaurants, retail stores, and hotels. So significant impact from the arts and entertainment space here in Cuyahoga County. Now a little ways away in Sandusky, we've got some new information about Cedar Point. We do know they're opening dates for their new Castaway Bay and Sawmill Creek resorts. Now the park will open for the season on May 7th, but there are two big changes at the park. There's a newly renovated Castaway Bay Water Park Hotel and then also the Sawmill Creek Resort. So Castaway Bay is an indoor water park hotel and that'll be debuting. And on each floor, there are themes of land, sea and air. They are connected to the rooms. They've got new dining options. There's mini bowling and there is the popular indoor water park with its 10 attractions. So great spot for young families. And then also Sawmill Creek by Cedar Point Resorts. This is a little further away. It's about a 10 minute drive from Cedar Point. And it's surrounded by 200 acres of wooded area. It's been completely renovated and transformed. It's got an 18 hole golf course. It has new places to eat. Right there, there's the Lake Area Marina. It does have a resort pool, and there's also a flexible indoor event space. So if you want to have an event there, you can do that. There's 35,000 square feet there for that. So available for casual stays, family vacations, major events, or a week-long retreat. Really, whatever you can dream up. Sounds like they can handle it there, and that's the latest information. So Castaway Bay will reopen starting Friday, May 6th, so the day before the park opens. But Sawmill Creek will be waiting a little bit for that one. That will reopen on Monday, June 13th. So if you're planning a special event and you'd like to hold it there after Monday, June 13th is when you're going to be able to do that. Now, next week is the NFL draft. You know, last year we had that here in Cleveland. It was incredible. This year it'll be elsewhere, but that doesn't mean people still won't be paying attention. But people that are Browns fans might not be paying attention in round one because the first time in a very long time, for the first time since 2019, the Browns will not have a first round pick. Remember, they traded that first round pick away when they picked up controversial quarterback Deshaun Watson from the Houston Texans. So what we do know now is rounds two and three, though, on Friday night, will have a total of three picks for the Browns. Now, that's, of course, pending no last minute changes because we know those things do happen do tend to happen throughout the NFL draft. There could be some last minute changes, but as of right now, the Browns first num first pick comes at number 44 overall. That'll be in the second round. There are players that the Browns could be targeting. A lot of players that they might be looking at include wide receivers. So we have a breakdown of five players they might be looking at on WKYC.com. Here's one of them, Jahan Dotson. Now he's a wide receiver out of Penn State. 
Officials are saying, analysts are saying that as many as eight wide receivers might go in the first round of the NFL draft. So he may or may not be available when draft pick number 44 comes around. But if he is, he's a potential for the Browns. He could be a smart pick because, as we do know, the Browns are looking to shore up that wide receiver spot. If you want to check out the other four top five potential picks for the Browns, you can check that out on WKYC.com. And now I want to share two stories with you from our good news show, It's All Good News, that comes out every Thursday at 1 p.m. on the WKYC YouTube page. Our win of the week goes to Canton McKinley graduate Kirsten Bell because she is the first ever Stark County native to be picked first round in the WNBA draft. She is going to be playing professionally for the Las Vegas Aces. She is an incredible athlete. She is also one of the first, she is the first Stark County person to be named Ms. Basketball three times. And she broke the career scoring record for Stark County. She started her college career at Ohio State before transferring to Florida Gulf Coast University. And now she'll be on her way to Vegas to play in the WNBA. Congratulations, Kirsten. You can see more about her in the Good News Show. And then also we're celebrating an over at Lynn High School teacher, Kurt Russell, because he has just been named National Teacher of the Year. There was a celebration this morning for him at the high school. We live streamed it. You can see it on WKYC.com. Here's what he had to say. He said, I am truly humbled and honored to be selected as the National Teacher of the Year. With this recognition, I hope to bring attention and awareness to the importance of diverse faculty and representative curriculum that helps students feel more empowered in their education. Incredible words from National Teacher of the Year, Kurt Russell out of our own Oberlin High School. Check out more stories to make you smile on the good news show that drops, like I said, every Thursday at 1 p.m. on the WKYC YouTube page. And look for our call out every Monday where we ask you why you're smiling so that we can share your good news in the show. That's it for today's three news now update for Thursday, April 21st. I will see you all back here tomorrow for more three news now.